everybody. I hope that you are ready to talk about boundary spanners. This is what we are going to uh, talk this morning. So, um, I am, for me, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much to Matthias. Thank you very much to DPW. And thank you very much for all of you, not only for being here, but also to push the boundaries of supply chains with your role in procurement and digital supply chain, digital procurement. So, we are in the same uh, boat. So let me introduce uh, myself a little bit. Um, I have two roles. One role is about the MIT Supply Chain Management Master Program. So then if you are looking for talent, I can help you, right? So then we have uh, 80 students coming from all over the world with five years of supply chain experience. We are very proud of being number one worldwide with our master program. And uh, yeah, our students are very highly uh, demanded. So um, in terms of my other role, I, have the, I am the director of the MIT Digital Supply Chain Transformation. Every single word here has a lot of meaning for us. Uh, digital is obvious for you, supply chain is obvious for you, but transportation, sorry, transformation is my key word here. Uh, my research is about how, what is the transition what is the evolution for a value-driven supply chain when we have layers of data that we can um, take advantage in order to move our supply chain to new spheres, right? This is the idea. We work in my lab with three topics, main topics. One is multidimensional collaboration. We are going to talk about it. I am a firm believer of collaboration. And then data-driven digital ecosystems is a great opportunity for all of us. Um, I, I mean, we were working with several companies. I am putting some examples here. Um, with Walmart, we were working about horizontal collaboration and last mile delivery. We are going to share today the last, their last product, the last service they have about Go Local, because they are promoting multi-dimensional uh, multi collaboration. The second topic of my lab is about digital supply chain capabilities. So our main claim is that in order to transform your supply chain digitally, first you need to push for a strategy. And this is what we believe. So first is value propositions. How do you ambition about your supply chain? And then technology will come. Uh, don't ask the question, what blockchain is going to do for me? For, from our point of view, this is not the right question, at least for starting the journey, right? Is how do I ambition my supply chain? How do I ambition my procurement in the next five years? And then the answer will be go uh, with data and with technology. Um, and also the third that is, um, I love it, is artificial intelligence and, uh, and in supply chain. I am bringing together these two other um, legs of my research. Um, with uh, AI, I am now doing research on how human and AI team together. What are the teaming capabilities they need to develop in order to drive value-driven supply chains? Uh, this, is, this is the idea. So then we are doing research in order to move from pure automation, very data-driven RPIs, into augmentation. And augmentation is coming in two directions. Right? From the human to the AI and from the AI to the human and how they can work together. And I want to measure all these uh, elements. And actually, I am uh, right now involved in a research project on all these um, elements, human machine intelligence, collective intelligence, uh, for especially for supply chain resilience. Huh? So then if you have data, if you are, I mean, working in a boundary spanner, so buyer-supplier relationship using AI, and you want to explore more of these things, let me know, okay? So, but let's go with the main uh, aim of this presentation. It's about boundary spanners. So, um, I have just published this article at Harvard Business Review that the title is Digital Transformation is Changing Supply Chain Relationships. Why did the I mean, main editor of Harper Business Review remove the term boundary spanners? I don't know. Because for me, it's the main, main trigger here and the main point, right? And then, um, but we are going to discuss today about this role of boundary spanners. So let's start first with the, what, how we will define boundary spanners in the supply chain. 
So are those um, members of the supply chain, typically supply chain team, or some functions in the supply chain, like procurement or distribution, or maybe uh, commercial purchasing, in which you are in contact with the external stakeholders of your value chain, right? And this can have a key role in your digital ecosystem. And this is what we want to discuss today. But before the starting, maybe in production can help me, because I would like to hear your opinion. This is the first, the first thing we are going to uh, do. If you can, um, I mean, production can project, please the menti.com uh, poll. So then we can uh, show the QR code here, if you don't mind. <laughs> if not, we will jump. Mm. OK? Now? Here we go. OK. So then also for the, um, those that are um, live streaming, uh, then you go to menti.com. Then you include the code that is in the top of the slide, 1404-3098. Or also you can scan this QR code. Please, could you do it now? I hope that you can do it here. Uh, so if you scan this QR code from your seat, hopefully you can do it. Mm. Then the key question is, what are the benefits of boundary spanners in digital supply chains from your experience? I mean, have you identified these boundary spanners in your supply chain in your company? What are the potential benefits of those in your particular digital supply chain? Not the regular supply chain, the digital supply chain. When you are taking advantage of data, when you are taking advantage of technology, when you are transforming into these opportunities behind of, of all digital era. Oh, we have a lot of answers. I am glad to, to see that. Uh, no clue? Yeah, OK, yeah. So let's, let's discover together. Huh? So uh, visibility, transparency is so important, transparency. But not all the companies are happy with transparency, right? What about if my competitor is going to learn from my data, if going to identify my core um, um, I mean strategies? Um, um, so then stakeholders alignment, totally. Um, then please explain, of course. Huh? Um, competitiveness, stakeholders alignment, closeness to, cost, to customers, seamless. I love the word seamless, so important, right? Um, uh, different system, cybersecurity, this is the trade-off with transparency. Uh, cost reduction, okay, how boundary spanners can bring cost reduction? It's a key question, right? I was discussing just before with, uh, with Scout B CEO about how important is cost reduction and how you can measure the return on investment from your AI. And this is a very open question, but this is no time for discussing this now. Yeah? So again, thank you very much. So I wanted you to start thinking about it. Um, so um, about what the boundary spanners, what the boundary spanners can be, especially in your supply chain. Let's, let's try to discover this. So these are the objectives of this presentation. So first, we are going to talk about your collaborative and dynamic ecosystem. It's something that is changing. And if you are bringing data up in your supply chain, then the, the stakeholders, the players are going to change, their role are going to change. And this is the beauty. You can discover how they can change, how can they can bring a maximum value for your supply chain. Second point, we're going to talk about performance. You know that performance is so important in AI-driven systems or digital systems that then different kind of KPIs need to monitor this. Because with maybe with your collaborative ecosystem, with your other players, external players, you have conflicting interest. Can you measure this conflicting interest? Maybe you can try to put these conflicts aside in order to focus on the non-conflicting elements. And then the third one is how these new roles of boundary spanners can be developed. Uh, how we can create good boundary spanners managers who can maximize this value from the digital ecosystem. What do they need? What kind of skills they need to develop? What kind of empathy they need to develop? That this is not obvious, but this is also the, the opportunity. So let's start the journey. So let's start with uh, your collaborative and dynamic ecosystem. So it's obvious that in the humankind we have learned how to collaborate. And those that were able to, to learn from this collaboration, 
they progress in a very good manner, right? They will not be the shark itself, but then they can really fight with, with the shark in a very good, I mean, balanced manner. And additionally, the opportunity is just, of course, thinking out of the box. But for this, right, for not only thinking internally in your company, what can do for a supply chain, let's, let's work together upstream with my suppliers, downstream with my customers, I mean, horizontally with my uh, competitors, with my non-competitors, with my uh, startups, with my innovative ecosystem, maybe with my logistic service providers. How can I work even also internally with commercial, right, with MLCs and operation planning that typically they are conflicting departments when we are talking about sharing data, right? So thinking, I mean, out of the box means that then we need to understand or we need to be able to speak the same language, the language of data. And ask yourself in your company, what is the proficiency of the language of data? Can they talk internally all this data language? Can sales and operations really talk this language in a fluent manner? or only relying on the sales and OP um, tool? Do, can you work, can you talk about these opportunities with your suppliers upstream with this language of data? How proficient you are talking the same language? Huh? So this is the idea and this is the opportunity. Thinking out of the box, but especially talking the language of data. And language of data in the proficiency manner is just to not only rely on data, but also relying on all the opportunities around data, discovering new players, discovering new opportunities, discovering new value. Huh? And this is what we are going to talk today. So we are quite used to work in the vertical setting. Am I right? So working with suppliers upstream, with customers downstream, this represents vertical, but then there are new opportunities for working horizontally. So working with non-competitors and working with competitors. How? For example, bundling our flows, logistics flows, right? I mean, going to, to fill the track in a more efficient manner, crea creating density, consolidating freight. Uh, in logistics, all these economies of scale and economies of the network are very powerful. And data can help us to discover in an intelligent manner all these opportunities, right? So this is what we are going to um, discuss because Again, buyer-supplier is something that we know how to do it. And there are different tools that can help me. But then there are more opportunities going beyond of these more traditional collaborative players together with your horizontal, let's say, horizontal player. This is why they are uh, represented in this, in this angle. Again, competitors and no competitors. Can Unilever work with Procter & Gamble in discovering new opportunities, for example, in logistics flow that is not the main core of their business, right? Mm -hmm. Can um, Inditex work together, for example, with, uh, I mean, a fish producer or fish packaging company to go to a remote corner of the world to share the plane? They are doing this. Even it's, it's surprising, right? Having, a, I mean, an Inditex garment together with a fish. Huh? It's in the same plane, but this is, this is happening. Hmm? So again, there are different opportunities and data and platforms can help us to find all these opportunities. So when we are talking about vertical collaboration, we are talking about procurement, of course. We are talking about inventory control. I'm sure that you know all these terms, just in time, push or pull, transparency, customization, um, ordering, bull whip effect, hmm? power, but what about power working with my competitors? There is a lot of power there, right? But then you cannot exercise this power in a, I mean, let's say, explicit manner because you don't have a contract when you are bundling, uh, I mean, a track in order to go to a corner in the world together with your competitor, not using an LSP. I know that using an LSP, they are doing the business for me. I am talking about just sitting with my competitor to bundle in our phrase. Hmm? And, and maybe the, an, a neutral platform can help me to do that. Then there is no contract there. It's the platform who is doing all the game for me. Hmm? So there are different dynamics that is around that play a role that maybe we are not so aware, 
And maybe with the digital platforms and with AI, we can bring these games um, in our benefit. When we are talking about horizontal collaboration, then again, supplier, supplier, in different supply chains, producer with producer, retailer with retailer. Um, and the key words are synergy. One plus one is three. Hmm? Coalitions, I don't know if you are familiar with all this. Uh, game theory, supply value, all this beautiful, I mean, a lot of PhDs are doing, have been doing with, with all this. Huh? Communities, bundling, gain sharing, value sharing, right? With I am sharing the, the freight with another player, how we can find new opportunities, how we can measure, quantify all these opportunities. Huh? But not only the monetary opportunities, what about the value, who is teaching to whom? Huh? Um, and how this, who is the student and the teacher in this collaborative game when there is no contract. So there is a very, I mean, um, interesting ga game behind. Huh? Competition. Um, so then, again, platforms can help us with all these opportunities uh, in your uh, digital value ecosystem. So, but the key question is, how digital value ecosystem can play from these models of supply chain collaboration? Who are the key stakeholders in your horizontal collaboration dimension? Did you think about it? Hmm? Are you playing with this, with them? Hmm? And then how do they interact with the more traditional vertical players? Because maybe your functions, you, uh, you have been trained to work with your, you are in the procurement function with your suppliers upstream. You know very well how to deal with them in certain category, uh, product category, or with certain suppliers, knowing your business and your industry. But what about with other stakeholders that are not so familiar with you? Hmm? I mean, um, are you open to explore opportunities? Um, so there are different benefits. So your collaborative ecosystem, then we are talking about this horizontal collaboration. We are talking about a smart recognition of stakeholders. Hmm? If we have, um, we are open, a new area for selling our products in a corner of the world, what about this region? Can we, I mean, find real-time data about the behavior of customers in that region? Can this other collaborator, can help me uh, to discover what this region can, can offer to me? And then in a smart way, uh, how we can align performance and how we scale up, not only with this new player in my supply chain, but maybe with other players in that region. Yeah? Align incentives. This is this all about incentives? This is all about performance in a dynamic manner. Hmm? So with digital um, platforms and with data-driven structures, we can explore new rules of the game. Uh, and this is the beauty, just start exploring and exploiting all the time in an agile way. So again, I am a fast-moving consumer good company, and I want to explore with another FMCG, so how we can discover, what, what kind of rules can we play, how these rules can offer some savings in my logistics network, for example. Can they find another players in my logistics systems? Hmm? So then this dynamic pricing and dynamic gain sharing. Hmm? Competition, again, the idea is that we can work, I mean, quite, quite openly with my uh, free enemies. Hmm? Boundary dynamics, they can be altered very dynamically and very openly. So today, then one player is a supplier, tomorrow is a customer, can be my co-producer. Hmm? Does this something that sounds, I mean, familiar or feasible for you? Or this is, I mean, um, science fiction. Huh? And then, or maybe we can play with a central trustee role, a new neutral player who can help me with this other competitor or no competitor to find these economies of scale, economies of network. Huh? This neutral player um, can help me to find these gains. Uh, but then, again, new roles, new stakeholders, these kind of companies are, are new in the game. Mm? And digital platforms can really help me with all this, with data-driven approaches. And then, in my company, the boundary spanners, again, all those that are working with external stakeholders in my value chain, then they need to be trained for that. They need to be prepared. They need to 
to have empathy with others in order to see what they can teach me, what they can bring, what value we can discover with them in terms of logistics flows, in terms of maybe, uh, again, new um, sales opportunities. So then this is the role of boundary spanners, to be aware of all these opportunities that are listed here, hmm, that they can have, and I'm going to use terms that from my research, they can have enough psychological safety in order to explore the new game with those without being afraid of making mistakes because these small pilots will give us opportunity to discover new games. Uh, so then this is a lot of, uh, I mean, openness in all this, all this uh, game. So let's go to the second uh, point, performance. And then let's, let's use one example. Walmart. Mm, I will go quickly, yeah. Walmart. Walmart um, created this new platform. Um, they launched the platform one year ago. Uh, maybe you are familiar with it, it's called Go Local. So then they develop a platform to um, enhance their last mile delivery service with other retailers, other players. You have on the bottom of the slide, on your right, you have here Walmart, hmm? is here, hmm? the retailer. They develop the platform based on their last mile delivery uh, platform, their own platform. And then they wanted to collaborate with other players that are exactly in the same zip code, like restaurants or dry cleaning. So they can use the platform in order to leverage economies of scale and economies of network with other different players. Uh, can be competitors or maybe non-competitors would be better to start with. Uh, so then they have delivery drivers, could be drivers that I mean, have been hired by Walmart or maybe could be crowdsourced drivers like typical Uber um, in order to go to certain zip code so this driver here on your left, she will deliver, I mean, the groceries from Walmart to their customers, but in the same vehicle, the, the online uh, orders from the restaurant. Uh, this is the idea of the platform. Again, an ecosystem, different players. And, and what, are, what kind of different players do we have here? We have Walmart, that is the promoter of the platform, he is not neutral, right, in this game. He is not, uh, uh, I mean, a neutral player. And it, but then he can gain a lot out of this because he can put some volume, he can include some volume in the logistics deliveries. We have the customers, customers from different business, right, groceries, restaurant, dry cleaning, others. Uh, they can have, uh, for example, the drivers could be hired and belonging to the staff of Walmart, but also maybe they can be, um, I mean, uh, crowdsourced drivers who have different incentives in order to play with. Eh? Uh, so again, different stakeholders with different agendas, different expectations. Hmm? Something important here is that, I mean, according to a study by MIT Sloan Management Review, only 17% of the platforms that have been created are successful in the mid-run, only 17%. So what is going on with the digital platforms? The rest are not successful, they die. So what can we do with that? So from our point of view, what we have discovered, at least in the supply chain game, is that you need to recognize all your collaborative players and recognize what do we expect and how we can, they can gain with your game as well. So you need to create this empathy with them. You need to put in their shoes and say, okay, what do they need to grow? What kind of KPIs do I need to work with them? Hmm? So this is the idea with this uh, platform. So there are some, uh, again, feedback loops that we can measure with algorithms, AI, whatever. So again, if we start creating order density, we will have lower cost. Then we can have more order quantities. Hmm? So which then it means that we will need more delivery drivers that we will have more density, so the service will be higher, so then more partners, more order density. How we can incentivize all these dynamics with my algorithms and my platform. This needs to recognize all the stakeholders that are on your right there. Hmm? And this is the beauty, not only Walmart, not only the on time in full, there are other incentives that we need to take into consideration in order to have a scalability for my platforms. Hmm? So yeah, all servitization from Walmart point of view, 
They monetize their, all the digitalization effort in last mile deliveries in order to, yes, to scale their logistics. Um, they were open to collaborate with competitors, non-competitors, new actors like crowdsourced drivers in the game, and then maybe to explore new rules and new settings. So again, if we found, for example, a zip code in which there are some opportunities because the population of this zip code is with good education, good salaries, maybe you can try to incentivize a smartly in this area with certain restaurants, or maybe to make a pilot and then to learn from that. This is the, the idea, yeah. So performance was important, absolutely yes, but different kind of performance. What we call here key performance indicators and also key learning indicators. These key learning indicators are the deltas, how we are improving in this game, right? In this game, how we are improving, how we are creating lower cost, more orders, more density, better service. What are the deltas? Can we include a machine learning algorithm that can discover what is incentivizing my deltas, my improving here? This is the key allies. But also from all the stakeholders' point of view, not only me as a Walmart who, are, who is the owner of the platform, because this lack of empathy will make my platform die. Hmm? So this is the, the idea. So um, let me finish with very quickly, we already present this, and then what we need to develop with boundary spanners. So identify opportunities for collaboration with new players, for example, Walmart and TikTok, they collaborated, create these KPIs and key allies in order to monitor the gains. Uh, examples with a, a smart, I mean, pacifier, I love this product. And then uh, uh, develop responsive contracts. For example, Flectronics with the war room. They, they monitor all what they are doing with suppliers, customers, and different players in their contracts. My claim, and this is my last slide, huh? Boundary spanners could be the key roles in the game changing huh? um, because they can find the way to maximize this value that was outside the box. Only they need to, I mean, to talk, to play the language and the opportunities from data. Moving from profit sharing to value sharing. Huh? This is the, the idea. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, stay connected in LinkedIn, and I hope that you enjoy your boundary spanning reflection. Thank you very much. Thank you.